Hi Felters and welcome to the fourth part in my Woodland Bauble series. We have done the Owl, the Badger and the Squirrel and today we are going to do Miss Rabbit, the easiest of the lot. Let's get started. So here she is, she could be a rabbit, she could be a hare at a stretch. Very simple shape, head, ears and then a little ribbon on the front. So um, I've run out of my slithers so I've gone on to just some core wool batting and it's quite a big piece so I'm just forcing it round and trying to keep it in a nice tight ball and then I'm taking my clover pen with 240 triangulars and we're just going to felt it together at this stage so it holds its shape and so it doesn't sort of pop out the corners which mine is doing because it's not a slither. So um, just roll it round turning it, felting it, turning it and felting it. See there it's just starting to sort of push itself out so I'm going to use my multi-needle tool holder 40 spirals in this one. It does hold eight but I find that's too many so I've just got four needles in it and it just really helps get things into shape quickly. It doesn't firm up but it just gets things to hold. And then I've gone back to the clover pen just for a bit more tidying up. Um, just checking for size and shape. We'll do a quick measurement. So I think at this stage it's two and a half inches. So this is a carded Corridale rabbit from World of Wool. I shall list all of the wools in the description below. Just use something similar. Carded wool is so much easier. If you are a beginner, you will have heard me going on and on about this. <laughs> um, it's a lot easier than tops when you first start. So carded wool or bats or batting it can be called in America. Bat is actually the shape of it. So I've just wrapped it round and again, multi-needle tool holder, um, just going in and just attaching it all round so it doesn't sort of bounce back off. And then there was a little bit just at the edge there, which was going to show some join marks. So I've just covered it up with a, a loose piece. Um, as I said, just preempting. So now we're at the three inches, which is a little bit bigger than we want it to be. So now we're going to do some fine detailed work going in and felting it close together and really firming it up. So you can see here, I will forward some of this. Very squishy, a lot firmer. So it just firms it up. And just to show you, the needle goes in quite far. So imagine that on both sides. So that is why I don't spend ages firming up the base and then attach the next level because really just add the top level and firm it up. If it's not too big, then you will be able to firm it up in one go. So it saves a bit of time. So here I am just going through it. So it's all done. It took me about 20 minutes. Just take your time on it. Enjoy the process. And actually, I do measure it in a minute. We're going to do the white bit next. That white bit is still um, a little bit fluffy. I didn't go over it in fine detail. So we're just going to pop it on using the clover pen again. I work my way through the middle bit first before I sort of try and define the edges, but we don't want the edges really well defined. We want them a bit fluffy. So here, I forgot to measure. So it finished up at two and a half, just over two and a half inches across. But obviously, you can do them whatever size you want for your tree. You might think these are too big. I do warn you, if you go too much smaller, um, fine detail is quite hard work. Um, small is hard because you end up stabbing yourself a bit more. And if you didn't want them as baubles, if, if you just wanted them sort of on the shelf, then you could obviously go bigger. So I just work my way around. So I did the clover pen first just to attach it and then a 40 triangular just uh, working my way around but not smoothing it over too much so you can see it's still quite fluffy I like that effect for the rabbit for the chest so we're going to make the head and just to show you I never really show it properly I sort of do a little twist at the beginning almost giving me something to wrap it around um, it's a lot easier sometimes especially when you do a leg or something like that to wrap it around a pipe cleaner. Obviously the head's tiny, so I don't need to put a pipe cleaner in it, but it helps if you've got something to wrap things around. So I just do a little twist at the beginning and the head is two, we're aiming for two inches in length. So I've just wrapped a small section up and I'm just gonna attach it and then deciding which end is going to be the nose and which end is going to be the back. You guys that have listened to me do this all the time, it's very repetitive, but 
one end of the um, head is going to be flat and that's where we're going to attach the ears that's the flat side so you're going to felt that nice and down upon itself all the way across in an even way so felt 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 and the nose you're going to gently encourage it downwards you just want to sort of round it off you don't want a sharp um, end now I needed it to be a bit bigger so I've taken another section and most of the section I'm going to put towards the back of the head because that's where I want to build it up. It's fine uh, letting a little bit more go down to the nose, but it's quite nice that the back of the head is slightly bigger, thicker and wider. So I've left this in. I'm going to take the clover pen and work it all over. So I, I haven't forwarded much of this. Just to show you, it does take a while to um, sh shape up the head. So you build it all up with the clover pen and then you take a fine needle and firm it up it's narrower see it's narrow and then it's a bit wider across the cheek so it's narrow through the head and I squidge it a bit between my fingers to help that and I work both cheek sides first a lot of the time so when you take the fine needle work it all the way over because you do want it to be a, a decent firmness so I'll give you a little bit of music and you can watch as we go all the way through it I get so caught up in the middle Thinking of drowning in those blue eyes I'm losing sight cause I am falling I'm so deep down, deep down And it's not a lie That I die I can't hide So there we go even though the head is a lot smaller it still takes a while to go all the way around it so um, do put the time in for that so again easily 15 20 minutes so these guys kind of take an hour to an hour and a half two hours depending on whether you're a, a real beginner so do put aside a bit of time you don't have to do them all in one night spread it out over a couple of days so we're going to do the face next we're going to do that bottom mouth and mouths and and lines it just takes practice okay so sometimes people put a comment in saying you make it look easy and sometimes <clears throat> i completely ruin it as well don't think i get it right all the time but um it's just practice so take a little bit of black wool like a teeny amount of black wool twizzle it <laughs> and then you're going to have the black wool line slightly bigger 
than the size you want it to be because as you felt it in it concertinas in and I'm using the 40 triangular here so a fine needle don't use anything too big because it will just sort of push the black wool into the head and you you might lose it and if that happens don't worry just pull it off and start again maybe get a little bit more black wool and so define the edges and then the little end bits just sort of tuck them into the edges um, I find it easier to have a tiny bit more rather than a tiny bit left less and have to add some but it's practice it, it's all it is so there's the bottom mouth bit then we're going to do the V um, because it's easier to do the line at the end going down between the two so black wool twizzle it um, and again slightly longer than it should be so hold it across work out the middle point of the nose that's the bottom of the V felt that down so that the wool stays there and then you can do the V off that so I had to hold it so that I don't pull it and then as you've attached it I like to re-twizzle it so it stays twizzled and then go up choose where you're going to do the line to and then um, that little extra black bit was quite all right on this side I just felted it into the top and sometimes there's a little sort of nostril area there anyway so it works to have that a little circular bit just at the top you don't have to so I felt that down and then I struggle so I have to turn it round um, to do it on the other side try and get the V correct get the point correct um, and then I did have a bit too much black on this side so I just trim it off but turn it the other way and check the V's all correct because sometimes your V can be a bit wonky <laughs> Um, but yeah, so I trimmed a little bit off and then I tucked the rest of it in. And I managed to sort of make that all disappear. We're going to do a nice little nose in the V shape in a minute. But the next bit is the line going down from the V to the bottom of the mouth. And I have um, a whole video on animal faces and how to do them. And then obviously I have some slightly more in-depth online courses for doing Highland Cows. Um, and a couple of other animals so and I'm working on those courses at, as we speak as well I'm trying to do more and one day I will do a horse course too <laughs> keep being asked for it but it's going to take me ages so the last bit is the little line going down and again make sure that your black wool is slightly longer and then just tuck the ends in it just seems to be an easy way of doing it you could do this with actual wool yarn if you find that easier a nice thin piece um, and if you really don't want to do lines, I guess you could draw it on with felt pen. I don't know if that's sacrilege, but if you really don't want to go there, or you don't have to do a mouth, just do a little nose and just ignore all of that. So this is eggshell colour from World of Wool. It's a fantastic light, well, it, it's eggshell colour, but it looks like a fantastic light pink. So it's really, really nice to so take a tiny amount and then work it in a circular ball on your mat and then roll it between your hands that really helps bring it together and then just pop that in the V if it's too big take a smaller piece don't force a massive piece in if it's too small add a little bit more and yes I am felting around the base of it but I can felt through this because I don't want the nose to stick out too far so just felt all around again 40 triangular mind your fingers but once it's attached you can get your fingers out of the way but you're trying to work it in that V and not cover up the black of the V as well. So there we go, just work it through. And it does sort of stick out a little bit, but I think it's quite sweet actually. So that's good. And now we're going to do the eyes. So um, I always go up a little bit, sort of at an angle from the nose. So just to show you sort of how halfway point and back a bit, halfway point and up a bit so in that top quarter that's where I like to sort of put the eyes this is the owl or all which is really great you can use a pair of scissors but this just does a much more direct job and push it sort of facing backwards a bit so that the posts don't meet in the middle so put the eyes in and check them first so hold it across check from the front check from the back check from the side is it level and then look at it and go does it look right because I thought that looked a bit not quite right even though I had it level so I moved it a tiny bit and then angle it backwards obviously that all comes out the other side so do be careful but it's not that sharp 
put the eyes in and just have a look and then we'll get the glue out and glue them. So I use a Bostic All Purpose glue. Yeah, I'm quite happy with them. Put the all back in so it holds the shape open because when you have glue on, that's the time that you don't want to be forcing it in because the hole has closed up a little bit. Believe you and me, I've done that many a time. It ends up in a bit of a mess and you get glue over your all. Right, so there we go, push it in. That's nice and easy. Do the other one. There we go, so that's the eyes. And we're going to do a little bit of black around them. Like I said, I like to soften them. You could use a brown here. You don't have to use um, black. I think, I don't know, I think black's the best, but because the rabbit colour's got brown in it, you could get away with a bit of brown. In my animal faces video, we go into doing sort of a little bit of eyelids, shaping the nose a bit more, things like that. And I do have a very in-depth hair course for a long hair, haired hair and a short haired hair as well. Um, everything's in the description below or just go to my website, feltspyphilippa.com. So, circle the, so I didn't twizzle this black that much. You want it a teeny bit fluffy so it catches and then do the other side and it just, I think it just softens the eye beautifully. So we're going to attach the head literally at the top of the white bit and sort of back a bit. You don't want it sticking out too far. And this is 40 triangular, but you could use a thicker needle here to be fair. And I do get my clover pen out and we're going to felt down uh, from the very base of the head all the way round and at the back of the head is where you can get a lot of really good stabs in. You could do the head at an angle, which I was just sort of showing you off to the side and that gives your animal a bit more character. So it's quite nice actually. Um, and at the back of the head here, that's where you can do a lot of stabbing and really strong stabbing because you're going to cover it up with um, the ears in a minute. So there we go. There's the clover pen out, lots of good stabs. And then I actually get my 32 out, the black um, holder. As everyone keeps asking, these holders are Fimo clay and I literally just shape them and then bake them. I find that really, really good. So firmly attached, give it a pull, check it's okay. So that's the ears next. So take some of your um, rabbit colored wool and we're just gonna draw the shape on the mat because we want them quite long and pointy wrapping them around your finger that's not going to work so well so we're going to do um, a shape on the mat and then just sort of fold it in so you're going to use the fact that it sticks to the mat to your advantage and then you have to peel it off um, um, so do the shape and then gently fold the edges in these ears don't have to be amazing they it's nice if they're a little bit flat but I do a whole video on using heat on your wool and how to get really flat um, hair ears and things like that. So these, you know, I'm not going to iron them or do anything like that. So when you go to peel it off, support it. Otherwise, you would it would probably break. This is the ear I made first off just to show you. <laughs> I made the ear far too big. So I had to start again. I get things wrong all the time. And so I'm going to size up the second ear whilst I've got the first ear there before we finish it. That way I've got two even ears. So I do recommend doing that. It's like if you do legs, like small legs, pull off the same amount of wool into four piles before you start and then they're the same uh, size. So I put that one aside and we'll carry on working on this one. So we've worked it over with the clover pen with the two needles in it. I'm going to work it over a bit more and then see that side underneath is the side that looks better because it doesn't show that you've folded it over. So that's going to be the outside of the ear. Um, and work over the edges, just gently felt them in a little bit. Sometimes I get two bits of cardboard and felt them down, but we don't need to do this for these ears. They're really quite small. So take a finer needle. That's how we're going to be doing them, is folding them in half, just checking for size. A little bit big, but we're going to uh, felt it down a bit. Um, so take a fine needle and then work your way all the way over the back and just felt the edges in a little bit, just at 45 degrees, mind your fingers. And then we're going to put a little bit of colouring on the inside of the ear. Now you can have these ears pointing up or I actually do these ones pointing down because I quite like that sometimes. But I don't think it looks the best, but I do like the, I just like it. I think it looks nice. So um, if they're pointing up, it's nice to put a bit of shading on the inside, a little bit of white or a little bit of the eggshell. So it ties in with the nose, but it doesn't show up loads. So, you know, just do a little bit lightly. Um, 
felt it on. It's not too bad if it comes through the other side because there's a lot of white in this rabbit colour anyway. But if you did have a colour that was quite strong, try and uh, felt this at a very shallow angle so that it doesn't come through the other side. So there we go, we've worked it all over. Now we're going to fold it in half. And I really want this ear to stay in half sort of further up. So I'm just going to felt along the backbone a little bit. Well, not that there's a bone in there, but along the back of it just to sort of keep it together a little bit more. And then we're going to felt down at the bottom. And do you see how we've kept the end fluffy? That's great for helping for when you attach it all. And then so I get the clover pen, just uh, felt it across ways. And that will definitely keep it folded. Actually, I had to sort of unfold it a little bit, so it worked really well. It just helps keep its shape. And then I'm going to just so if you want it at the back, it would be right at the back of the head and you do the other one on the other side. But I'm going to play around with it. So I'm going to do this pointing downwards. So I think it's quite sweet like that. Don't think out to the side works with these guys. You could have one up, one down, things like that. Play around. So we've got too much. I'm going to have it pointing downwards. We've got too much wool at the top there. So I just pulled a little bit off. And even once I've done that, we've still got too much. But we're just going to felt around the very top. It's right at the back of the head and we're going to felt around the very top of the ear. And then I just trim off that fluffy excess because there's still too much there. I don't want that on the forehead, but I do have to put a little bit of covering over it anyway. I want enough there that I can just felt it down a little bit more. Sorry if you can hear my dogs <laughs> walking about outside. At least they're not barking. Um, so that's one if you do the other and then we're going to put a thin covering over the top so really thin that's even too much so I just pull that in half and then I do take the fine needle and actually it takes me a little bit longer than I thought to work all the way over this because it's like you're working on the head again and trying to get it all smooth so just take your time and work it all the way over There we are, two little ears, give them a little sort of point outwards. <laughs> it's very sweet. So next tail, we are nearly done. So with the tail, I'm definitely using the white for the tail or the natural Perindel bat, I think it is. Just layer it up so it's a little bit shorter. And then we're gonna give it a twist through the middle. The twist through the middle just helps you with um, having something to felt through to attach it sort of all in one go I, I just find it a little bit easier and so hold that right down at the base because we're going to fold the other bit back up so we get a nice thick tail so just felt through that twist bit right at the base doesn't take long and we're going to keep this tail really really fluffy so fold all of that up pointing it sort of in the upward direction and then you're going to felt either side of it to keep it in that shape and then I use the clover pen for a bit and then I'm just going to use a single needle and do a couple of felts three you don't want you're not felting the whole load of wool together you're just keeping that fluffy shape and making sure it sort of stays there so a lot of uh, little felts through and then I actually trim the top of it um, because it's just easier to get a sharper edge and a point. It's nice for the tail to have a little point. So careful you don't trim the ears by accident if your scissors are longer than mine. So I just give it a couple of trims at the top and then I just try and shape it in a little bit more because it's a bit too fluffy there. Sometimes I give the top a little twist or twizzle so it ends up in a little point. And a little bit more just at the back there. It's up to you. You could do a much smaller round tail if you wanted to, if you preferred to, but I just like the effect of this one. And then, yeah, it's still a little bit fluffy, but there we go. Tail, all done. Next up, we're just going to do the bow. So take, um, I just took a thick needle, wrapped it around to tie the bow, because I don't know how you tie a bow without doing that. Um, make sure the uh, ends are even, and then do your bow. And then you can slide the needle out and you've got something um, 
to um, keep the bow in place, trim the ends so they're not too big, check that the bow looks about the right size and shape and then we're just going to glue it on. You could sew it but you have to go all the way through the head and out the other side so you need quite a long needle but I just glued this one and it's the other one has stayed on absolutely fine. Uh, like I said, a Bostic all-purpose glue. So just hold it on for a few seconds and then gold thread. So the ribbon's off Amazon, the gold thread's off Amazon. Just search it up and you'll find it. Um, but yeah, just slot it through the head, try and keep it nice and even and then tie it up. I have to say a massive thank you for all your wonderful comments so far. You guys are loving this series. Thank you so much. Um, and I'm really enjoying doing it. So I've still got the fox to make up. So the fox is the next one. So there we go. Two different types of rabbits. Ears up, ears down. It's up to you. I think the ears up looks good actually as well. But there's Mr. Fox. So he's the next one we're going to do. And I'm looking forward to seeing you. So thanks for watching everybody and take care.